Hello, and today I'm going to introduce you to my sharpening machine. This is something I've put together, this is still in prototype stage really, um, but it is to answer some of the shortcomings of other sharpening systems, or sharpening systems that I couldn't get my hands on. So I'll talk you through the components and then I'll show you how it works. It's very simple, but so far, from what I've the testing I've done, it seems effective. So this is based on the Scary Sharp system, uh, which is something I've used for a number of years and found it very good, except that it's a bit labor intensive, all that backwards and forwards. Um, so I think I was thinking in terms of making something that was powered that would do a similar sort of job. And that's what this is all about. So the basic, uh, principle is it's based, we have a, a motor in here, it's actually a windscreen wiper motor, 12 volt motor. So I have a transformer that converts the 240 volts into 12 volts. That's fixed into uh, the top here. A uh, very simple mount, just three bolts, it comes ready to mount in the car, so it's very simple to drill three holes in a bit of plywood to fix it to, bolt it to. Attached to the motor is a connecting nut. Uh, which is an M8 connecting nut, uh, which gives me a hexagon. And then it's a case of cutting a hexagon in the back of a disc, so that can sit on top. We have four roller bearings here, the idea being that we keep this sitting flat and level. I've then got a surface that's built up, so this is all level across the top here, or yeah, pretty, pretty close to level anyway. Um, but the advantage of this is that you can then take a disc up, Go from one grit to another very quickly. Uh, with a lot of machines, they're fixed at one grit, or it's it's it, it's a it's a bit of a faff to change it to another grit. With this, the whole, what I wanted it to be was quick and easy, so I can change grit. Um, I can also again go onto uh, a wheel that's got a leather holding surface on. Um, that one is actually a bit thicker because of the thickness of the leather. These are obviously very thin. This has got uh, pressure sensitive adhesive uh, sandpaper. So, you know, very, very quick and easy to apply to a plywood disc. Um, but as you can see on here, we've got 80, 150, 180, 220 grit um, lapping film, sandpaper, if you want to call it. We then move into we've got the micron, 60 micron, 40, 30, down to 15 microns. Uh, so this is very much based on the scary sharp system. Um, I've then got a few discs here that are shaped. This is actually tulip wood rather than plywood, shaped to take carving gouges. Uh, and this one for the V tools. So I'll show you that it's working uh, in due course. But it's very very quick and easy to change the wheels. Now the reason I wanted the surface level was for using a honing guide. So you can put your chisel or plain blade in here, use the wheel, um, and then switch the grit out very quickly. And so it's very quick to change the, uh, the tops. We have a master switch, which just turns on, puts power onto the transformer. Then we've got a switch here. It rotates it one way. Switch to go the other way. So it's very quick to change direction. Uh, the different directions are not needed for most things, but if you're sharpening a knife, for example, then you can uh, actually, rot actually turn the blade over. Uh, you've then got uh, rotation either way so that it's running away from the sharp edge. Uh, you can use these things going towards the edge, but it's a lot safer. They like to catch if you have it running away from the blade. Also, got a tool rest here. This is a tool rest that's taken off a uh, uh, actually the record sharpening system uh, although it's a similar sort of bar used on a lot of different uh, um, wet grinding machines. Um, so you can set this got an adjustment there um, to set the height for an angle if you so choose. But I find it's quite useful just having a something to rest on to hold a chisel or a gouge against the wheel, not necessarily using it with the gadgets that go on here. I mean, you could 
set a uh, angled surface. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that it sort of gets in the way a bit when you're changing changing discs. Well, it is still possible to, depending on how close this you, how close to the surface you have this. Also got marked on the surface here uh, distances for setting a honing honing guide. So with this particular guide, it actually gives you the, the protrusions for different angles on the side. So if you want a 30 degree, uh, 30 degree bevel, you put this in here. 30 degrees is a 30 millimeter protrusion. And you're then good to go. Uh, we'll start with a 120. Just colour in the uh, use a sharpie. Colour in the bevel, so we can see where it's cutting. Right, I've got a burr across the back there. So let's go from one to we'll jump through to 220. It's worth saying there's virtually very little heat, if anything, on the blade. So um, it's also very safe. If you didn't catch your knuckles on it or something, it's not going to really do any damage. It's going slow enough um, that it's, it's, it's safe in that respect. So you don't get the heat build up, so you're not going to lose the temper on your edge. But, all right. Go on the, if this is a little bit higher, I'll take it out of the guide for this, <coughs> just to hone it at the end. And then just to remove the burr, we will run that on the back as well, holding it flat on the wheel. This bit of wood here, just so we can see how well that is cutting in. But yeah, that's nice and sharp. You go across the end grain. Lovely and sharp. So it's simple to use. Now for a carving gouge, the way I tend to use, uh, I, I found works well, is to just use it off the rest here. You can have a quick look. Well, again, it's a pretty good idea. Colouring the bevel so we can see where it's. Uh, making contact with the wheel. Again, totally cool to the touch. So no heat build up there.
as you can see on there beautifully hopefully you can see shiny blade like a mirror um, and cuts beautifully right, this wheel is made from tulip wood so it's solid wood uh, I turn this on the lathe and it has several profiles to match different V carving tools now I know this one fits the middle groove and the ridge above it for the inside so we have it running away from the tool The basic construction is just a box, um, so we've got, it's all just screwed together, didn't bother using any glue so I could take it apart. Uh, as I this is a prototype, this is prototype number three, so I've made various modifications as, with each one. Uh, the top was then built up using different thicknesses of ply to get it as level as possible with the disc. That's the uh, mains, and then we've got the switch. I put two handles on there just to make it easy to move around. One on both sides. Roller bearings. This is a magnet just to help pick up any metal swarf that comes off. Um, this is the M8 connector coming off the motor. Uh, roller bearings. This here is just some hot melt glue I put around. I did some experiments with using a lubricating liquid so I thought this would just help keep liquid getting down onto the motor. Um, that said I have found I don't really need it. Uh, this is this is actually a Tormek tool holder and uh, so this is a record uh, tool rest but they're all very similar. The motor is a windscreen wiper motor. Uh, these are relatively cheap. I paid 20 quid for mine off eBay, a second hand one. Uh, easy to mount. It's got a screw thread on the spindle so you can bolt things to it quite easily. Uh, and they're robust motors and being 12 volts generally a bit safer for the electrics. The motor has five pins in the plug Attaching the 12 volt supply across these gave different speeds on some of them. Some of them didn't appear to do anything, so these are probably related to intermittent functions. Having the fastest speed is what I've gone for here. For some reason, the motor runs faster in one direction than the other. I really don't know why. So we have our 12 volt supply, which I bought off Amazon. Um, this is, so we have a mains cable coming in. That goes to the back of a switch here, uh, which is a fuse switch, uh, to um, so I can just turn the whole machine on and off from the outside. That then goes into the transformer. Um, so we have uh, live, neutral and earth coming in here. And then coming off that we have a, uh, a positive and a negative lead. On the end here we have uh, an adjustment screw and that allows you to tweak the voltage. So I've actually cranked this up, it makes the wheel run a little bit faster. So it probably takes it up to near, perhaps near a 14 volts, something like that. Um, it doesn't appear to have any adverse effect, but it does make the, make the motor run a little bit faster than it did when this was just at 12, the plain 12 volts that it came with. So these wires coming off here then go down to the two-way switch, which has the positive and negative coming into it, two leads coming off, and the switch reverses the polarity, so it just switches the direction of the power coming in to reverse the motor. It's as simple as that. It's a very basic interior. So the wheels are six inches across. So the way I make these is just to lay it out first of all. Making a mark in the centre. 
a 17 millimeter drill bit. These are nut covers. Same size as the screw connector that's in the motor. We have all the different wheels. This is the close up showing the VTOL wheel I've got, uh, as well as the domed ones for. Um, carving tools just using the bare wood surface with a honing compound this is um, the green polishing compound widely available um, and this is what was recommended from Ashley Isles carving tools certainly um, and something I've been using for years on my uh, reverse running uh, polishing system, honing system. So there we go, that's basically it. As I mentioned before, this is a prototype and I may well modify things further. If you have any ideas about how this could be improved or anything I've done you think could be bettered, then please make a comment below and I'd love to hear your views. Likewise, if this, is, if this has been interesting or useful to you, then please like the video and subscribe as it does help the channel. Anyway, see you again. Bye-bye.